In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can improve your autofocus system within your Fujifilm camera. Simple, easy tips and tricks, but it will benefit your autofocus system. It's gonna make it faster and more reliable. Yo guys, what is good? I'm Florian. So as mentioned already in this video, we're gonna talk about Fujifilm autofocus settings, tips and tricks, how you can improve your autofocus system within your Fujifilm camera to make it more reliable in certain ways, also faster and more accurate as well. But before we're diving into my tips and tricks and how I did set up my Fujifilm cameras, let's touch on to the subject of autofocus in general briefly. It also depends on what sort of lens you use when using your Fujifilm camera. Are you using an older lens like a 56 1.2 or are you using a newer lens like a 23mm f2? Depends what sort of lens, it will affect your autofocus as well. The 56mm f1.2 was never really a really super fast autofocus lens. However, the newer lenses like a 23mm f2 is decently fast and accurate as well. So keep this in mind, depends on the lens you use, depends on your autofocus as well. A older lens performs maybe worse than a newer lens. But also it's a scenario which you're shooting at or in. Let's say you shoot in low light, your camera will perform worse in low light than in good light. Of course, all modern cameras nowadays are pretty good. Let's say the last four years, the cameras are decently fast in low light as well. Thumb rule is, as better your light, as better your autofocus, as worse your light, as worse your autofocus. Keep in mind the lens and with that said, let's dive into my tips and tricks. Tip number one would be, know your subject and choose the right autofocus for your subject. It's nothing worth this than using the wrong autofocus settings for the wrong subject you would like to shoot. It doesn't benefit you if you need a fast or fast continuous autofocus and your settings are in single point autofocus. Pay attention to your subject you shoot. If you shoot still images then go with single point autofocus. If you have moving subjects, your kids or sport or anything similar, then go with continuous autofocus. Always good to make sure that you have the right autofocus settings accordingly to your subject you're shooting. Second setting you might want to look into it is how many number of autofocus points you use within your camera. Are you using 117 points or are you using 425 points? The difference between 117 points and 425 points is or should be obvious with 425 points you got more autofocus points throughout your sensor therefore your camera got it a bit easier to focus there are more autofocus points available therefore your camera will be more accurate and faster focusing as well the third tip would be the size of your focus point and it doesn't matter if you're in single continuous autofocus or in continuous focus you can adjust the size of your focus point. You can make it smaller and you can make it bigger. The difference between those two settings is as smaller your focus point will be, as more accurate your camera focusing will be. However, a little downside to this is also your focus might be a bit slower, but it will be more accurate than with a big focus point. If you make a focus point bigger, your camera will be faster because your focus point is bigger. Therefore, the camera focus it, it easier on a subject. However, if you would shoot the face or you wanted to have your eyes in focus in a portrait as an example, it might happen that your focus isn't as accurate in this moment when you make a focus point bigger. So usually I use it on a slightly smaller size of focus point. It works good for my personal needs. It's fast, it's accurate. However, you might wanna choose a big focus point because this is what works for you. You might need to try this out, which works better for you, a small focus point or a big focus point. After you've chosen your autofocus settings, if you want to shoot single or continuous focus, you also could amend the AF mode, which basically lets you choose between four settings. You've got your single point focus, you've got your zone focus, your white tracking, or you could use all at the same time. The single point autofocus will be good if you're doing still images, live images, such as like product photography, portrait, where you just need one single focus point to focus on your subject. You could use a zone tracking for continuous focus. If you got one single little window in the middle of your 
image or of your LCD screen, which lets you focus on one specific subject. And then you can also use a white tracking or zo white tracking zone. Tra and then you could also use a white tracking or use your whole sensor to track a subject. Let's say you would pan a lot around with your camera and something moves through the side or from side to side through your sensor, then white or white tracking would be a good option to keep a subject in focus if you wanted to. Depends of course on a subject you shoot, you need to choose accordingly the AF mode to your subject. As mentioned already, if you would shoot like some travel photography or something what doesn't move really much, you could use a single point autofocus. If you have maybe your kids or anything similar or your dog, you could use a zone tracking or a white tracking for a lot of movements, for a lot of things which are running through your sensor or through your lens. And in video mode, it's pretty much the same thing. You got the multi, which basically reads from your whole sensor. Like right now, I got the camera set to multi and it reads the whole sensor out and follows my movement and keeps me in focus. Or you choose the area single point, which lets you focus on one specific subject and ignores everything around and just keeps this subject in focus. So it depends what you would like to do if you want to film yourself or you do some vlogging, then you could probably good off with the multi-zone focusing for video because it keeps everything in frame or everything what is close to the lens in frame such as, such as myself right now. And if you wanted to, I don't know, film a cup, then choose the area single point and it keeps a cup in frame and you still can move around and keep this single cup in frame. But then one handy feature to have nowadays is also face detection. However, face detection can screw with your autofocus sometimes. Let's say you would be out in a city, shoot a cityscape or even some landscape, switch face detection off. It will interfere with your autofocus system and it enhance a bit with your autofocus system because it is looking for a face which does not exist so it tries to find something which just doesn't or isn't there. So if you need face detection, leave it on. It keeps your face nicely in focus. Like for video, it's perfect. It keeps my face always in focus. But for photo, if you don't need it, switch it off. If you photograph a person, of course, switch it on. It will help you to get a face 100% in focus. Last but not least would be the custom settings you can try out. In your autofocus menu, jump over to custom settings and then you got a multi-purpose autofocus preset, which is meant to cover most of the subjects you might want to shoot. However, you could choose also presets for rapidly appearing subjects, which just jump into front of your lens and you snap it and it should be in focus. Or obstacle avoidance, when you are in a tricky area where a lot of foreground is or poles or anything similar, which will go through your lens, then you could choose the settings to keep track of one single subject and ignore everything around it. Or you would try your own custom settings and see what is important for you. How fast is the lens meant to focus on something if you hold something in front of the lens or how fast does it jump back into your face? Give it a try and see what works best for yourself. I found the um, custom settings to program by myself the best option at present for myself. They are set to, to a bit of a faster tracking because I like to have things quickly in focus and then it jumps back into my face. As an example, if we cover the lens, my hand is in focus and then my face is in focus. So in what I said guys, very simple, easy settings. Make sure you got the most autofocus points available set to. Think about your lens you use, if it's an older lens or a newer lens, depends on the age of a lens, your autofocus will perform as well. What sort of autofocus do you need for what sort of subject do you shoot? And then face detection, do you need it? Then leave it on. If you don't need it, switch it off because it will interfere with your autofocus as well. And with that said today, guys, like, comment, subscribe, do all the good stuff. And I'm gonna see you, my friend, very soon in another video. See ya.